Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Backer and welcome to Write Better Stories. Today I am going to talk about Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. I think I'm saying that correctly. And I'm going to mention two instances of very good writing, which I think is probably the best quality of the book, the prose. And then I'm also going to mention a problem with the book. And maybe I'm being too hard on it, so you could let me know in the comments. But um, yeah, let's dive into it. So overall, like I said, I think the prose in this is very strong. And just the varied sentences that she uses in the paragraphs and the observations of this main character, Janina, are very well done. And so, for example, like one of the observations that she makes is that uh, older men come down with something called testosterone autism, which is basically, with age, many men come down with testosterone autism the symptoms of which are a gradual decline in social intelligence and capacity for interpersonal communication, as well as a reduced ability to formulate thoughts. The person beset by this ailment becomes taciturn and appears to be lost in contemplation. He develops an interest in various tools and machinery, and he's drawn to the Second World War and the biographies of famous people, mainly politicians and villains. His capacity to read novels almost entirely vanishes. Testosterone autism disturbs the character's psychological understanding. So, again, I think that that is just like a funny take on emotionally withdrawn old guys, and there are a few of those in this book. And then um, another instance of really good writing here is on page 71, where she, uh, this one's a lot more brief, but... She just writes, low dark clouds had been scuttling across the sky all day, and now, late in the evening, they were rubbing their wet bellies against the hills. Um, there are a ton of environmental descriptions in this and descriptions of nature, and I think that she really excels at this. And also, just at using very strong verbs. Oh, I said scuttling. It's actually scudding. Hmm. Um... So yeah, um, that's actually a piece of advice that I don't really care for in a lot of creative writing, that like everything should be based on strong verbs. Um, I think I tend to gravitate more toward writing that sort of um, reminds me of human speech, and I don't think human speech is always full of people saying things like, the clouds were scudding against the sky. But that being said, I think she actually does the sort of strong verb based sentences very, very well, and in a way that doesn't remind me of like a, oh, creative writing program or something like that. So uh, again, I, I wouldn't like die on that hill. There are plenty of examples of that style of writing that is very good, but a lot of times I can find it just distracting that um, it doesn't always come across as natural when someone's going out of their way to use all of these uh, like short sentences with these really pithy verbs. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's a controversial claim. You could let me know. Um, but like I said, I did have a problem with this book too, and I might be being too hard on it because this is something that's also come up for me in my own writing, and I'm still trying to decide how I feel about it. But the book presents itself as a murder mystery, and it's also told in first person. So before I get to that problem... I'll remind you that I think one of the difficult parts about writing something in first person is that it can be hard to evoke through the narrator narrating everything that they know, things that they don't know, which is an important part of storytelling. So like in third person, it's really easy to do that because you're like a fly on the wall describing that person, and it's very easy to seamlessly describe things that they experience, but then also things that they don't know anything about. However, in first person, it is assumed, if I'm correct, that they know the things that they're telling you because they are telling you it. It's all I this, I that. And so at its worst, I think that first person narration can come across a little bit stiff, and then unintentionally making the narrator appear kind of dumb or unaware that they are trying to evoke something that they want the reader to get, but they themselves do not understand. And so that isn't really what comes up in this book. And I'll say that for first person, she really excels 
in her prose at doing all of this. I didn't get the sense that she was trying to evoke all of these things that she didn't know about um, while simultaneously knowing the narration that she was telling us. But that being said, this is a huge spoiler, by the way, so turn it off if you don't want the book spoiled for you. Um, she ends up being the murderer. So that's fine. And there are plenty of stories and movies that do this where the person who is telling the story or the protagonist ends up being the murderer that they're looking for. However, since this is told in first person, it sort of makes me feel like the information about who the murderer was was a little falsely withheld because this story proceeds in a linear fashion and there are various moments when she's committing the murders that the scene just does not appear and we have to hear about it after the fact. And so this is where I'm still undecided. I don't know if I'm just being too hard on it because at the end of the day, I know that the narrator isn't actually telling the story. This is just a book composed of text written by Olga Tokarczyk and the point of it is to enjoy it and withholding that information about who the murderer is is just like the plot scaffolding to keep the scenes going and the momentum of the story to keep me turning pages as a reader. But again, I can't help but come back to this idea that this character is telling me this story and we're never really given a compelling reason why she doesn't tell us that she was killing these guys all along. Now, again, I, I get it. If she did that, that would take a lot of the mystery away from the story. But if that's the only reason that we don't hear about it, it seems like a contrivance more than an element of the story. Um, and I know that a lot of times in movies especially, but also in books, when the protagonist ends up being the murderer, sometimes they cover for this by there being some sort of like psychological block as to why they didn't know they were doing it. Or like in Shutter Island, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen that, but I think he ends up being the uh, uh, prisoner patient that they're looking for. And the reason that he doesn't know that is because he has all of these psychological issues. Um, that's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think that it at least makes it make sense that on the first... So my phone storage was full. But in any event, like I was saying, in Shutter Island, it makes sense that he wouldn't know in the first scene that he was the patient because he has these psychological issues. And so just to wrap it up, I don't know if that's like a devastating critique of this book. I did enjoy reading it. And I'm not sure the story really blew me away, but again, the prose and the eccentricities of the main character are the best parts of this book. But um, I would like to hear some feedback on my criticism of that issue with the first person narration and her not giving away that she was the murderer. And again, I understand it would have made the story worse. That That is not lost on me. That being said, um, I want to know if I am just being completely pedantic and just not being able to enjoy this book, but I think that it's something that we should at least discuss, and in my own writing, that's something that I want to look out for, is that obviously there are certain contrivances that you have to make for your story to, to work, and there is a limit, because after all, um, these characters aren't real people, they're just text on a page, and the whole reason to read a book, in my opinion, is for entertainment, or uh, a sense of connection with the author or something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be 100% realistic in all ways, but it seems a little bit contrived to me if the main character is telling you this story and they only don't reveal all of the information to you for the sake of keeping the mystery alive, you know? Uh, maybe I am looking into this way too much. Please let me know. Hopefully this will help you write better stories. Goodbye.